Rhetoric in University. This episode is related to rhetoric and debate and training in universities. It is part of the activities of Output 2, online course in rhetoric, Project Rhetoric for Innovative Education. We will try to get answers to questions related to rhetoric and teaching in university. We will try to find the intersections between rhetoric and new methods of teaching. We will evaluate rhetoric as an ancient and at the same time modern and vital science and practice. Ivanka Mavrudieva will lead the conversation in this podcast. The participant is Christo Atanasov, who has experience in public administration in Bulgaria. This is an episode related to rhetoric and debates and trainings in universities. It is a part of activities of Output 2, online course in rhetoric. Project is Refine, Rhetoric for Innovative Education. Hello, Mr. Atanasov. First of all, I would like to say thank you and you will take part in this dialogue. I am sure that we will present interesting and useful information in this podcast. And uh, uh, let's return to uh, university. You have experience as a participant in the course uh, in rhetoric. What do you think about rhetoric in university programs? Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Well, I may say that it was extremely curious for me um, how to stay in front of a camera, for example, what kind of clothes you have to pref- pre- prefer according to the situation. And um, actually, video recording helped me to see good practices and to analyze behavior. Students can improve their rhetorical skills if they can see video clips, including same of the best orators. Maybe um, another example would be that mobile phone help us to make videos and to improve re- rhetorical skills. And this was all learned from me during my, my stay at the university. What is uh, the better? Video typed in hall, in classroom, or uh, how to stay training by mobile telephone or in the virtual environments? I think you can you can start with something, let's say the telephone. You can record yourself, um, you can play it back um, to see where your mistakes are, to prepare um, for actually the second step would be which would be uh, somewhere uh, in the class during um, uh, in front of your classmates maybe in front of your family, in front of your friends, and so on. Okay, you uh, have experience as a participant uh, in uh, meetings and conferences at the national and international levels. Uh, Tell us about good examples and practices. I may say that um, some good examples would be to actually try to be um, really focused before that, because uh, for people it's really stressful especially for the first time. And um, just be prepare yourself with, with a good uh, glass of water because um, sometimes when you, when you need to talk a lot, you will need it. And um, you need to prepare your questions, but if, if not questions, something that you want to say beforehand and trying not to... Um, uh, to to learning by heart. It's really important not learning by heart, but actually try to um, really go in depth of the of what you want to say, because it will be more um, original. It will be something that um, people will want to listen. Otherwise, it will be something uh, monotonous, and nobody would want to listen to you. What do you think about presentation skills and uh, uh, stuff? employees in public administration. If it's very important to improve and develop their presentation skills when they should take part in conferences, meetings, negotiations, etc. Well, presentations are widely used in various spheres in modern society. 
let's take business, international negotiations, for example, meetings, especially nowadays, when you have these online uh, webinars, um, video conferences, um, because of the whole uh, pandemic situation. But um, if we if we actually look at the TED presentations, they have a strong influence on the way traditional rhetoric is used. The structure requires more effective introduction to, to conclusion. Arguments are creditable, but personal history telling entries into presentations. Moderate figurative languages is also a part of the presentations. What do you think about uh, another rhetorical genres? Statements, addresses, speeches? It's a different, I think. Um, Why the speech continue to be the most popular rhetorical genre? Because I think that in a speech, um, the speech is the best way to actually use your verbal skills in uh, in an environment, um, n not environment, but actually on a topic which is well known for you. Um, the speech often they're they're written by by someone maybe by you or um, by someone who actually um, is doing those type of things. So th the content of the speech often is is not the one that actually um, is important, but rather your um, your body language skills, your verbal skills, the way you present it, the way you actually uh, say it, when you, um, when exactly you're having pauses, when you're, uh, when you're um, actually... Mm, how to speak in front of the microphone, how to speak uh, in front of the audience, how to use tribune, how to move in the space. Specifically, uh, when, how you how you can how you speak with with the microphone, all these type of of things are actually important, and and the one that actually taking into account. What about uh, arguments and argumentations? Why it's very important to prepare very carefully and preliminary arguments? How to select them? If we prefer to be powerful, successful, effective orator. Um, maybe maybe the answer is hiding in in the question because it's really important to whom you're going to to present your either speech or presentation um, in order to actually prepare the right arguments for them because if you're if you're um, I don't know uh, discussing with uh, with students you will prepare in one way. If you're discussing with professionals, it will be other, completely other way. So you need the to know. The audience is is very important. It's the most during important. During the, the the most important, yes. It is the most important. I completely agree with you. And let's go to the final of uh, uh, our dialogue. Uh, why every single person should develop and improve rhetorical skills? after graduating of the universities, after the ceremony? It's really important because um, this is one of the, the easiest thing that you can, you can do in order to actually make some impact in your life, especially for the future. Um, of course, when you, when you go out there, you're studying some specializations, you're studying masters, you're studying all kinds of of different things, but the one thing that actually um, goes hand to hand to every to everything is the good communication and to use advice given by experts. Especially mm -hmm. that, especially that this is something that um, it's really good to actually um, have someone, uh, some expert near you to to tell you your mistakes, to tell you what's what's not right and how you can improve it. Nobody's perfect. Everybody should improve in the future rhetorical skills. Thank yes. you very much for your participation you. and con contribution in this podcast and project. You have been listening to the episode Rhetoric in University, Output 2, online course in rhetoric. Project Rhetoric for Innovative Education.